Hi everyone and welcome to Know Your Food with Wardy. I'm Wardy, a wife, mom of three, and the lead teacher and founder of TraditionalCookingSchool.com. I'm also the author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Fermenting Foods. I'm so glad you're here. This is the podcast devoted to healthy family cooking with traditional methods like sourdough and old-fashioned pickling. These foods are delicious, easy, healthy, and your family will love them. If you haven't already, be sure to grab my free gift for you. It's five free traditional cooking videos from Inside Traditional Cooking School that will introduce you to my favorite fundamental techniques of traditional cooking. To start watching now, just go to knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash watch. And now let's get to today's episode. Hi everyone, welcome to Know Your Food with Wardy. This is episode 149. If you're joining me on iTunes or through knowyourfoodpodcast.com, you will find the show notes at knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 149. I want to say a big warm welcome to those of you who are joining me live on Periscope today as I'm recording this. The show notes are not ready for you, but they will be when this podcast is released in a week or so, actually in about two weeks. Um, so it's going to be really fun today to talk about eclectic, fun, and useful uh, kitchen tools. That is what we're doing. So if you're listening, I'm going to do my best to describe these tools. But this is definitely a podcast where you want to go to the show notes, knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 149, and check out the video because I have all of these eight eclectic, fun, and useful tools to show you right here on video. Okay, so it's going to be fun. So welcome to everybody who's with me live and welcome to those of you who come along later. It's just so fun to sit down and do this with you each week. Okay, so and while I'm presenting this, while I'm talking, uh, whether you're live or later, uh, be thinking about your favorite eclectic, fun and or useful hand tools because I have eight of them here and I'm sure it's not all of the possibilities. You may have some too, so I want to hear about them. So I'm going to ask you at the end either to comment live or to leave your comments at the show notes. Okay, so here we go. These are not in order, by the way, okay? And you're going to see a big influence of my mom here. <laughs> my mom is a fantastic cook. And she's always looking out for me with good ideas. Okay, so once again, not in order. This is tool number one, a Danish dough whisk. Has anybody used one of these? Tell me in the comments. Just put a thumbs up if you have. I love this. This is not actually influenced by my mom. This is influenced by a member who said, Wardy, you would really love this and sent one to me. They actually come in two sizes. Spring Spinner says she wants one. Murphy says, I have one. Moms with Alice says, no. Um, Emily, good to see you. Is giving a thumbs up, several thumbs up. And we've got a nope, never heard of it really. Okay, so for those of you who are listening, not watching, it's a wood handle. And then it's got these wires that scoop around at the top. And it's a whisk. Um, but it's comparable to a wooden spoon, except that because the wires make the spoon part and they're swirled around, you can actually stir pretty thick doughs without the same resistance of a wooden spoon. A wooden spoon is going to push back on the whole surface area of the wooden spoon, where this only has, is going to push back where the wires are. So you can actually work very thick dough without, um, without all the energy that's required if you used a wooden spoon, or maybe you'd have to just simply stop with a wooden spoon. You can keep going with a whisk, so a Danish dough whisk. So this, for instance, um, you can do cookie batter or muffin batter that ordinarily maybe would be too thick to do by hand, you can do with a Danish dough whisk. I love to do doughs um, with this because, um, you know, I have a great mixer and, but sometimes it's just like, I don't want to deal with the sound. I don't want to deal with having to clean it up and I can accomplish a ton with this whisk. And it's very inexpensive. By the way, I'll have links to all of these, the best ones that I know or, you know, can find for you at the show notes. Know your food with Wardy. Sorry knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 149 for those of you who may be looking for one or more of these eight eclectic, useful, and fun hand tools. So that was number one, a dough whisk. In the comments, I am seeing I want one and I have one. So we've got a good mix there. This is a fantastic tool. Number two, I think I'm going to go with one from my mom, inspired by my mom. Mortar and pestle. Who has a mortar and pestle? You can see mine is well loved because it's stained with the different foods. This one is actually an olive wood from the Middle East, a gift from my mom. Lisa has one. 
Um, I can't read your name. Me, I love mine. If you guys would put your first names in your comment, if you could add that, that would help. I want one. Emily, you're two for two. You've got both tools. We've got a yes. Spring Spinner says yes. The thumbs up. Used to have one. Oh, well, you need to get another one. Oh, and Emily has a stone one. Fantastic. Okay, so mortar and pestle. <sighs> Great, Leanne. Uh, Kathy's saying she loves hers but needs a larger one. Yeah, and a granite. Connie has a ceramic, but careful they can shatter. Um, Grace, Sarah has stone. So here's why I love mine. Um, you can just crush so many uh, like whole herbs. Like if you are doing a chai tea mix and you have peppercorns and cinnamon sticks and whole cloves and whatnot, crush them all. If, they, if your herbs are whole and you're crushing them, you get so much more fragrance and nutrition from crushing um, whole rather than um, already crushed herbs that have been sitting in your cupboard for a while. Um, we have a wonderful um, lamb roast, another recipe that came from my mom, and we crush whole garlic and salt and olive oil and herbs together and make this rub to rub on the top of the roast. And we cut little slits in the top of the roast so we can really you know, press that rub into the fat and into the meat. And this mortar and pestle just couldn't even, I couldn't do the lamb roast without this mortar and pestle. I absolutely love it. It's like, it should be listed with the ingredients because you just need it. You need to be able to crush the garlic, salt, herbs, and olive oil together to make that rub. So love my mortar and pestle. Um, I, oh, I wanted to tell you that lamb roast, if you're interested, if you're a member of Traditional Cooking School, several years back, I made a thank you video on that. And if you don't have it and you're a member, you just email in wardee, W-A-R-D-E-E -E, at traditionalcookingschool.com and you can request that thank you video. I'd be very happy to give it to anyone who's a member who's listening to this. Um, Alice says she needs one. Yes, you do. All right, so that was tool number two, the mortar and pestle. I didn't describe it for those of you listening. Um, but I think you probably know what it is. It's not a, really a surprising tool, but you've got this pounder and you've got a bowl and you, you, you know, you put whatever you're pounding or grinding in the bowl and you pound with the pounder, mortar and pestle. Erica says hers is stone. She doesn't use it much. It takes a lot of strength. Yeah. You know, I don't use this every day, but I certainly use it often enough to make it where it's a prized possession. Alice is asking, how do you clean the wooden one? You know, the oils and such, um, they just season the wood. So all I do really is just rinse it and I let the oils just season the wood because wood dries out. And so there's no reason why it can't absorb oil. You get a lot more life and longevity out of your wood tools if you keep them seasoned with oil. So I'm not too concerned about cleaning. Thank you everyone for the hearts that continue to flow. Isn't this fun? Okay, so um, tool number three, this is fun. <laughs> New Year's resolution, use mortar and pestle. That's a great one to put on the list. Okay, this is fun. It is a wooden butter mold. Oh, on the mortar and pestle, what type of oil? Whatever I'm using in it, um, it's usually olive oil because that's what I'm usually crushing with herbs. But if I needed to season it specialty, specially, I'd probably go with coconut oil, which is how I season really anything that's wood. Season with coconut oil because it has a really long shelf life, it's not gonna go rancid or anything, and you can keep your, your wood you know, moist instead of getting dry and cracky. So, the wooden butter mold. This is, um, it's, it's Sweet Mary's, or is it Aunt Mary's? Sweet Mary's butter mold, it comes from homesteadersupply.com. You can find a link to it at the show notes, knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 149. You, you know, make your butter. Michelle's saying she loves it, me too. You make your butter, you pack it in here, you know, pack it really tight, smooth it with a knife. Then you turn the whole thing upside down. Sorry about the noise, everyone, because I'm pounding this wood right by the microphone. Then you um, put it down on parchment paper and you got a bunch of thick butter in there. You push this down till it meets the base. And then you, um, you're basically, I take a knife actually. Well, actually, no, I lift this off then. Okay, and this, this base is not down at the parchment paper. It's wherever the thickness of the butter is, so maybe it's about there. Okay, and then I take a knife and I cut the butter off this wood handle plunger thing. And then I've got my butter on the parchment paper. I just wrap up and freeze or I, I usually do um, five or six pounds of butter at a time. This mold holds one pound. Um, that's its capacity. So I do probably five or six at a time from 
two or three half gallon jars of sour cream that are waiting for a butter batch. In fact, I need to do it tomorrow. And anyway, this just is nice. You do not have to have a butter mold. It's just probably in the, it's in the fun category on the, the title of the podcast. Definitely fun. It's probably eclectic because not many people make their own butter nowadays. So it's um, definitely un unconventional, right? <laughs> Hope for good, where do you get your cream? Um, we make a lot of yogurt and we have raw milk and the yogurt is raw milk. Um, so it's, it's, it's raw milk yogurt, it's non-homogenized. So the cream, we're making yogurt with the whole milk but the cream rises to the top during the culturing. And I keep some of it in the yogurt. Um, if, it's a, if the smoothie or whatever, I would want cream in it. But a lot of the cream I skim off and then we eat it as sour cream and it builds up in half gallon jars in the fridge. And when I get two or three half gallon jars full, then I make butter with soured cream. You can also make butter with sweet cream. I happen to love soured cream butter. It, uh, the flavor is just so much more from uh, sour cream. Okay, so that was number three. Number four. Lee is asking, Leanne, can you do the same with cream that rises to the top of kefir? Absolutely. Any kind of soured cream or sweet cream, make butter out of it. It's amazing. If you're a traditional cooking school member, we do have tutorials on butter making, so you can check those out. Um, I'm on, I'm going to lose count. I better keep these in order. Okay, I'm on number four. This is a juicer, something from my mom. Okay, everybody. If you're listening, you do need to, you know, hop over to the show notes, knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 149 to at least follow the link to see what this is. It's not your typical juicer. It's not like the, the big wide base glass ones with the spokes coming out of the middle that you rotate your lemon or orange or lime on. This is got a wooden handle and it's got those spoke things and you're actually going, oh, it's a reamer. Alice is calling a reamer. I knew there was a name, right? Alice, this is called a reamer. I always call it a juicer, but you're right. My mom told me it was something different. So anyway, you're going to insert it. You're going to hold it with the handle and you're going to insert it into your fruit. And um, it's just a really, you, you don't need another contraption. You're just doing it right with your hand, just juicing your lemons, limes, or oranges. So here's a, a really cool um, juicer slash reamer. It's reamer. It's really a reamer. Thank you for, this is the benefit of being on, pa on Periscope is you guys can set me straight when I'm wrong. <laughs> so I, I think Leanne and somebody else has one. Does anybody else have one? Melissa, love, love, love mine. So tell me, do you do anything extra special with it other than juice? Annie says she has a glass one. Nice. So you basically, uh, Michelle has one. Nope, says Lisa. Well, I'm kind of surprised because um, I guess I don't get out much. I thought that this would be one that almost nobody knew about since it's fairly new to me. And I've never heard anybody talk about it or anything. So you guys have been keeping a secret. <laughs> Moms with Alice uses it for citrus. Um, Grace, Sarah says, I do. It works so well. Okay. Awesome. I'm glad to hear you guys use it and love it. So that was number four. We've got four more to go. We use them a lot here in Oz. Where do you find one? Kathy says, my mom had one 40 years ago. I will find out by the time the show notes come up because I'm not really sure. But I did see one somewhere since I got it. And I mean, it may have been at Fred Meyer. And I was like, oh, they actually, you know, these are actually on the shelf. But I had, I mean, this is like less than a year old to me. I've gone near, I've gone 40 years without knowing what a reamer was or ever having seen one or at least having like registered. Uh, to the sky, dear, says try a kitchen supply store. William Son Sonoma says Grace Sarah. Am I, I hope I'm saying your name right, Sarah, because it ends with an E. Number five is a rolling pin, but it's an ergonomic rolling pin. It has a center post, and then it has a small roller on one end and a kind of a medium-sized roller on the other end. It allows you to... Okay, so Grace Sarah is just Gracie. I'll get that right now. So it allows you to roll out things in pans with lips. You can actually get to the edge. It's actually, and it's ergonomic. And this smaller end of the rolling pin is fatter, so you can use it really to push out dough. This one is perfectly, um, the circumference is the same along the whole uh, roller. This is the medium sized one. It's flat, so it's good for smoothing and doing uniform pushing. Anyway, this is fantastic. It's so useful because a big rolling pin 
you know, is wonderful. Like you're doing a big pie pastry crust or something that's big, um, tortillas and such. This allows you to do smaller work in pans and just get into little nooks and crannies. And um, anyway, I love it. And I'm seeing in the comments, you love that. Shelly says she has it and loves it. Annie, that's so cool. I want one. I hope you can get one too. Okay, so Annie, you're on, I'm putting the dots together. Annie is using Emily's account today on Periscope. Neat, yeah. So that was number five. It's a, it's a rolling pin with, I don't know, a center post. I don't know. It's a rolling pin, but it's different. Okay. Five, six, you guys know I'm the complete, I'm the author of the complete idiot's guide to fermenting foods. So I love fermenting, right? Well, here is a fermenting tool. This is called a kraut pounder. This came from krautpounder.com. Um, which is a offshoot of the Weston A. Price Foundation chapter in Eugene, Oregon. They make these and sell them online. Uh, you can also find them at homesteadersupply.com. It's called the Prepper Pro over there and it's very similar. It's hard wood. This is the most amazing thing. Now I do um, no pound sauerkraut. I just mix the cabbage with the salt and the salt works to pull out the juices so I don't have to pound a lot, but you still need this to press your mixtures down in jars. You can actually use it to crush fruit and crush other things. It's just so amazing. Lisa's saying it's on her Amazon wish list. Melissa's saying the same thing. Um, Beck is saying, I want one. Yeah, they are just so, so handy. And I saw someone in the comments saying she found one in an antique store. That's awesome. Definitely keep your eye out for one of these because I mean, this would function as a mortar, a mortar and pestle, you know, do it in a bowl and you could crush herbs and things with it too. crush your garlic. It's packing things into jar and crushing foods. It's really, really handy. And it's a beautiful wood. And once again, just season occasionally with coconut oil to keep it um, in nice condition and last you your whole life. So that was number six, right? Number seven. Scoops. <laughs> I noticed to the sky deer that there was some jibber jabber coming through the comments. Okay, so scoops. Who has scoops? I know these have been around for a while. They're a really popular item at Pampered Chef. I think mine came from Pampered Chef. Lisa says she's got one. So these are handy. So they're, you think about an ice cream scoop at an ice cream um, shop where they have the you know, the squeeze lever action to pop the, um, the um, scoop, the ball of ice cream out of the scoop. Well, these are just mini sized of that. So the smallest one is one tablespoon. This is amazing for uh, cookies, just getting um, even sized and consistent cookies and even shaped in balls. A lot of times I like to scoop out one tablespoon portions of cookie dough, and then I'll actually um, flatten them down. But if you start with a scoop, you get really uniform cookies, whether you leave it in a ball or whether you flatten it out. And all, all of you in the comments are saying you love them too. Um, Melissa loves hers for Lindsay's Bites. Amazing. You guys know in December, I was talking a lot about the nourishing no bake treats from Lindsay Dietz. Uh, the link is tradcookschool.com slash no bake. And yes, these are up. this one, one tablespoon scoop is amazing for those no bake balls. Lisa says she's bought it after watching me make muffins. Totally. So here's the, I think it's a quarter or a third cup size and it's perfect for muffins. This amount of batter is just what you need to put into your normal size muffin tins. Um, and you know, I do it fairly generous. So it's fairly generous in the muffin tin and then you have perfect size muffins. What size for meatballs? That is a good question. I've not actually used one of these for meatballs. Anybody in the comments know, have you used a scoop for meatballs? I normally just do those with my hands. While I'm waiting to see if anybody does that, I'm just gonna thank you all for the hearts flowing um, and for sharing and for being here in your comments. And Gracie says two of the small for meatballs. And Beck says she uses the bigger one. Um, Leanne says sticky einkorn sourdough English muffin dough. <laughs> Use the big one for that? Yeah, totally. Annie says she's using or using it for meatballs is a great idea. So that was number seven, scoops. I will have links and photos at the show notes for all of you who are listening. Um, so you can, you know, fill in the blanks if some of these things are not making sense. Knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 149. 
We only have one left. One left. Okay, so if you've been with me at Traditional Cooking School for Einkorn Baking, uh, you've already seen this. Okay, it's a ravioli cutter, which I use. Okay, so this one has two blades on it. You know, think a pizza cutter. I'm saying for those of you who are listening, think a pizza cutter, except instead of a big sharp wheel, there's just two tiny wheels. And some ravioli cutters only have one wheel, but mine has two and they're just tiny. They're maybe an inch uh, circumference. I mean, sorry, an inch uh, in diameter. Okay, um, so back to the rolling pin. I said circumference, I meant diameter. <laughs> Okay, so Lisa says she's never seen one like that. Okay, well, here's the thing. So mine has these two wheels on it, and one is wavy. You can see it in the video, and the other is smooth. But it's a ravioli cutter, and I use the wavy end actually to cut crackers. You roll out your cracker dough, and you normally use a very sharp knife or a pizza cutter to cut the um, one or two inch squares, whatever size. Well, if you use a ravioli cutter with a wave, you actually come out with wavy crackers. It's so fun. I mean, the kids love to do it and they're teenagers and they love to do it. And here I am, um, 40 years old and I love to do it. It's very, very fun. Um, Moms with Alice haven't seen a double blade like that. Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's not very expensive. I will have a link at the show notes or you can just go there and look. Um, <laughs> my kids wore mine out using non play doh. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not very expensive. You could request it in your stocking for Christmas. So once again, to all our listeners later, um, there will be links and more at the show notes, knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 149. So now let's take a few minutes before we wrap up. And um, if you're here live, just in the comments, tell me if you have a favorite fun, eclectic or useful hand tool that I have not covered. Let me know that. And if you're listening later through iTunes, Stitcher, the podcast app, or right on knowyourfoodpodcast.com, go to the show notes and share your favorite fun, useful, or eclectic um, kitchen tool. Melissa says her other favorite tool is the microplane grater. Yes, yes. I probably should have had that as number nine. So yes, great. That's a bonus one. Moms with Alice, a spiralizer. Totally. Yes, a spiralizer is amazing. To the Sky Deer says, not for cooking, but clean up. She uses a paper, a paint scraper for stuck on food. Totally. Yes, you guys, these are fantastic. I use all these too. Okay, silicone funnel says, hope for good. I do not use that. So tell us how you use that. What do you use a silicone funnel for? And you guys just keep, keep chiming in if you've got more. Thanks for the hearts that are flowing. Um, Dawn's Lisa says, yes to all. Good. Pie cutter knives that we use for egg slicer. Pie cutter knives. That's fantastic. You, uh, but a pie cutter knife, is that a, I don't know what that is exactly. Egg beater old style hand crank. Yes, I debated bringing one of those because those are really cool. A gnocchi press. Am I pronouncing that right, Gracie? Hope for Good says for bottling homemade sodas, water kept for away sodas. That's what you use the silicone funnels for. Okay, great. Yeah, that's good. My son has this thing rigged where he asked me to get some tubing and he decants with a, a tube at a higher elevation to a lower and he's so really good at that. Pastry cutter makes great egg salad, says Kathy. Yep, that's great. Gracie says it's called Noki, so it's a Noki press. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. Uh, Julia says uh, she wants a jerky gun. Totally, that's a fantastic tool. You guys, I probably could have doubled my list here, but I'm glad I didn't because that means you can share too. Any more? I'll just wait a minute or so. Melissa says her kitchen shears. Yep, I agree. Like if you're butterflying a kitchen, a chicken, um, those are so handy. Hope for good. I'd like knowing what siphon your son uses. It's just um, food grade um, clear tubing. I got it in the plumbing section. Um, Beck, we need a video of your son in kombucha. Okay, I promise we will work on that for sure. I'll, we'll do a video of decanting. Wire cooling rack for chopping eggs for egg salad. Oh, that is brilliant. Thank you, Gracie. That's really good. <laughs> awesome. 
Okay, well, this has been so fun, everyone. Thank you for joining me at home for this live recording of Know Your Food with Warty. I welcome you all to check out the show notes at knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 149. And remember, if you're listening later, there is a video of this waiting for you, as well as links and pictures to all the eclectic, fun, and useful tools that have been mentioned today. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments about your fun, your favorite fun, eclectic, and useful tools. Moms with Alice is saying amazing info. Thanks to everyone. I agree. I agree. I brought eight and you guys brought 20 more. It's been amazing info. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll come back again soon. Here's what you can do next. You can visit the show notes for this episode to get links and more resources about today's topic. Just visit knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash and then without a space, type in the number of today's episode. You can stop by knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash watch to get five free traditional cooking videos from me. It's a gift. And finally, you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, the podcast app, or Stitcher. If you're on a mobile device, just search for Know Your Food with Warty right in the app. If you're on a desktop or laptop, just go to knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash iTunes right in your browser. And while you're there, please leave a rating or review. I love to get your comments and your feedback makes it much more likely that others who are interested in traditional cooking will find my podcast too. Thanks so much. God bless you. And I'll see you again soon.